Seen here in May at one of his last public appearances, Prince Naif bin Abdulaziz held public office for close to 60 years. He was the son of King Abdulaziz, his mother from an important tribe. Described by some as an anti-reform conservative, he became the governor of Riyadh when he was just 20. He held the post of interior minister for more than 35 years. The bombing in 2003 of a housing compound in Riyadh brought him face to face with the work of Al-Qaeda. There is no crime more brutal than the crime that has happened here. It happened in our nation and against our nationals, against Arab Muslim residents. He saw the group as a threat to security and directed his forces to hunt down active cells. At the same time, he's believed to have used traditional tribal networks and the clergy to counter the group. Prince Naif was also in charge of the country's secret and religious police. He was known to oppose giving women the right to vote or drive. Prince Naif also played a prominent role on the international stage, here attending an Arab League meeting in 2010 to discuss measures to combat violence and organised crime. In March last year, Saudi soldiers were sent to neighbouring Bahrain to help crush pro-reform demonstrations. The previous week, Prince Naif had visited the kingdom and had commented that Bahrain's security and stability were integral to Saudi Arabia. In his late 70s, Prince Naif had been reported to be suffering from diabetes. His death now opens the way for the selection of a new crown prince and a new interior minister. A leading candidate, Defence Minister Prince Salman, seen here in 2008 with the then US President George Bush. Well, Prince Salman is very astute, he's very austere, and he is very decisive. Now, he's got these qualities, and he, he's also a man of the world. He knows what's going on. He has a lot of international and diplomatic experience. He's all for having a Saudi Arabia that would be playing a key role in world affairs and also um, having uh, social development. With King Abdullah now in his late 80s, the appointment of his new heir will be keenly watched both inside and outside the country. Tarek Basley, Al Jazeera.